Beto O'Rourke is tired of the media asking him whether he thinks the president is racist. He believes everything is as obvious as the circumstances that surround us. The answer, of course, for him is yes. And he's urging the president not to come to El Paso as planned on Wednesday. Let's bring in the 2020 contender to get his reaction to what we heard from President Trump today, who did finally condemn white supremacy, kind of. It is good to have you here. I know this is home for you, and I know that's how they feel about you. They are happy to have you here. What do you want this community to know about what this situation says about them? This, this is the strongest, most courageous, and to use the word that you just used, resilient community you'll find in America, maybe in the world. The courage with which people have met the most grievous wounds, the fact that they've lost family members, the fact that multiple family members were, were shot at and some killed in this attack, and, and meeting this moment with kindness and love and generosity, a binational community, Ciudad Juarez in El Paso, Texas, three million coming together unlike any other place on the earth right now. Not only did we bear the brunt of this hatred and this racism and this attack, but we might also be the best example for this very divided country at this moment. So could not be more proud of El Paso than I am right now. Remind me to uh, show you what this woman Alma made for me today when she saw us here. Rose will give it to me. Uh, you just remind me at the end of the interview, but first. so. You say we have to be better. We have to see the bonds of love and those that connect us. But you don't think the president should come here. Why? I was just talking to somebody, listening to a woman who came up and said hello to me, and she said, why is he coming here when he hates us? Um, she's reflecting the fact that he described Mexican immigrants. This is a town of Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals, repeatedly has warned of an invasion, trying to make us afraid of those who do not look like the majority of this country. He's described human beings as an infestation, which you or I might describe cockroaches or termites, but, but not human beings. And you only get kids in cages. Uh, you only separate them from their parents. You only lose the lives of seven children in our custody in this last year when they're at their most desperate and vulnerable. You only have an attack like this when you have a president who gives people permission to act on this hatred and this racism and this intolerance. And so we must connect those dots. And if we fail to do that, we are then complicit in the violence that we will continue to see across America. I, I take the cogency of the argument. Here winds up being the challenge is that the easy fix here is to call people who do what this man did terrorism under the law. Give our prosecutors and investigators the resources like they have against ISIS and Al-Qaeda, root out where they meet and talk and plan and punish them the same way. How do you think you're going to get that done if you keep it very, they're over here and we're over here, even on this issue? I think you connect everyone and everything that's happened over the course of this administration, not just a rise in hate crimes every single one of the last three years, but the mosque in Victoria, Texas, burned to the ground on the day that President Trump signed his executive order seeking to ban Muslim travel, or the Tree of Life synagogue shooting, where the killer talked about the caravans that the president was warning us about, trying to make us afraid about the U.S. service members that he deployed here to this community, one of the safest places in the United States of America. That kind of fear that he ginned up, that hatred, was an invitation to violence. And it did not just affect El Paso or Pittsburgh or Gilroy or Victoria. It is happening all over this country. That's how we bring everyone in, Republican, Democrat, independent, rural community, big city alike, all Americans first before we're anything else. Respond to what the president said today and what was his effort to unify and move past the us versus them. Take a listen. The shooter in El Paso posted a manifesto online consumed by racist hate. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Now, I've heard the critique, oh, he didn't write that. He should, fair enough, but he said the words, and he did say white supremacy, is hate and should be treated as domestic terror. Yeah. Important for you then to say that this is the same man who called white nationalists and Klansmen and neo-Nazis very fine people. 
who asked for more immigrants who look like those in Sweden and Norway, the, the whitest places on the planet, while describing immigrants from Haiti as full of AIDS or countries in Africa as shithole nations. This is the most racist president we've had since perhaps Andrew Johnson in, in another age and another century. And, and he is responsible for the hatred and the violence that we're seeing right now. It, you cannot leave that just to me. Um, to say that. It's, it's got to be you and, and those who are helping this country understand what is happening in our name to connect those dots of these actions that can seem unconnected or disparate or random or just strange. That They're not. They're all of a pattern. And they all follow what this president has said from that maiden speech when he ran for the highest office in the land, describing the people of this community as rapists and criminals, uh, talking about people as though they are animals or subhuman. This necessarily results. You saw that manifesto. The words that he was using were many of the same words that the president has been using. We cannot allow him to get off scot-free just, just because he gave a speech here today. We cannot let him get off uh, with, without any complicity or justice or accountability, given what he has done and made possible here. There has to be, there has to be justice at the end of the day. There will be an election. Um, and in the meantime, between now and then and maybe after, how do you make these people safer? How do you get to some place that the majority of the country already is, which is all hate should be treated the same way, all gun sales should be checked the same way? How do you get these simple things done if both sides are standing behind walls of righteous indignation? I don't know about both sides on this one. As I travel the country... No, I don't mean it as an equivalency. Right. I'm saying that you are opposed to what he is about, and he has his supporters around him who feel that they must defend him to keep their access to power. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, as, as, I listen, as I listen to people in, in this country, they know that we are owed something far better than this. this. This division, this hatred, this intolerance, this racism does not reflect El Paso, Texas, does not reflect the United States of America. This community, uh, you see an average of 18 murders a year. Uh, one of the safest places in, in America today. It took someone from outside of this community who was willing to drive hundreds of miles to bring this kind of hatred here. We have to show that that is the exception, not the rule, but that will become the new normal if we allow it to be. If we don't stand up, if we're not counted on this, and as important as it is for me and for you to say this, for those Republican members of Congress who are silent on this matter or who talk about white nationalist terrorism but then do not link it to a president who has invited it and made it possible in this country and in my hometown, in this community, um, they are then part of the problem and it's their constituents, I mentioned elections earlier, who must hold them accountable. And, and I hear that loud and clear here in El Paso. I feel that from the rest of the country right well, now. Well, here's what you got motivating you. So this is what I wanted to show Beto. So this woman, Alma, she goes by Skosh. It's a long story to the nickname. But she took this rock, which is from El Paso, which is over there. She says, these aren't about walls. This is about what makes us up as the foundation of us. She painted the Virgin Mother on it. She did it herself this morning yeah. and said, I give you this because I want you to hold it close to your heart because it's heavy like our hearts are heavy. But it also shows that we believe in something better. Yeah. That, to me, is El Paso. Pure El Paso. Beautiful. Yeah. And we are so glad that you're here transmitting the story of this community. This shooting... These murders, this terrorism will not define us. The way in which we overcome this, our strength, our ability to come together, not despite, but I would say because of our differences, that's what makes us so special. I think that's what makes us the example that the rest of the country needs right now. This, this is very much El Paso. The people have been great here. They want leadership. They want better. We'll see what happens. Beto, thank you for giving a voice to the Gracias. frustrations. Appreciate it. Beto O'Rourke is here. You can hold the rock, but you can't have it. It means too much to me.